In this video, I'll discuss moving units around by railroad. In a previous video, we went over ground movement, which regulates how units move around by marching. In World War I, armies made significant use of rail travel. Armies coordinated with their national railways to pick up units and then transport them in trains along the railroads. On the maps, you can see the rail lines in the area. Solid lines, like you see here, represent double track rail lines, which can handle an almost limitless amount of rail traffic. The dotted lines, on the other hand, are single track rail lines, and these allow very limited amounts of rail traffic. The mechanism for moving units along the railways in the games is called rail movement. It took a lot of rolling stock to move a unit by rail. Due to this, there are limits to how many units a country can move by rail each turn. This limit is called the country's rail capacity, and it's expressed in the number of divisions a country can move by rail per game turn. In the early days of the war, most of a country's railway capacity was tied up in moving soldiers from their homes and barracks to their mobilization stations along the frontiers. In the Tannenberg introductory game, I printed the rail capacity available to each country for each particular turn right on the turn track. You can see that here below. Notice that for the first few turns, neither player can move units by rail as the railways are fully occupied with mobilization. Only on the 6th August turn can the Germans begin to use rail movement and on that turn they only have the capacity to move a total of six divisions by rail. The Russians, whose mobilization took much longer due to the vast expanse of their country and their comparatively meager railway resources, can only begin to use rail movement on the first September turn, and even then they can only move two divisions by rail. Obviously, rail movement can only take place along rail lines. Also, players can only move by rail on the railways within their own countries. The introductory game does not get into the conversion of rail lines and occupied territories by engineer units that other games allow. Also, should enemy forces get into your country, they will intentionally damage the rail lines and the hexes that they move through so you cannot use rail movement through any hexes that enemy units have been in. To move by rail, you have to be in or move to a hex that contains a rail line you can use. This means that you can use ground movement to get to a rail line and then move by rail during the same turn. But note that units cannot use the column movement bonus if they are going to move by rail. Once a unit is in a hex with a usable rail line, it can entrain, meaning it can load onto rail cars in that hex for a cost of one movement point. Once entrained, an infantry unit can move along usable rail lines at a cost of one-tenth of a movement point per hex. Other types of units, like cavalry, move along rail lines at a cost of one-sixth of a movement point per hex. When moving by rail, there is no effect on movement based on terrain. The unit is in rail cars and is basically enjoying the scenery as they move along. Since it only costs a small fraction of a movement point to cross from one hex to another by rail movement, you get the idea that units can move quite a long distance in a single turn by train. There is no movement point cost to get off the trains when you want to, but any unused fractions of a movement point are lost when you do so. Let's look at an example of moving by rail. The German 41st Division starts up here in hex 2003. The German player, let's say, wants to move it down here Text 1110. 
there's a rail line in the hex that the unit occupies, so it doesn't have to move to get onto a rail line. It can just entrain, that is, get on the trains, in this hex, and it pays one movement point to do so. It would then move by rail down this single track rail line to Konigsberg in hex 1506, and then continues along the double track rail line to Elbing in hex 1209. Following the rail lines, this is a distance of 11 hexes, and by rail movement, this will cost the division another one and one-tenth movement points. Up to this point then, the unit has expended two and one-tenth of a movement point. The German player decides to end the rail movement here in hex 1209. By doing so, the total movement point expenditure at this point is rounded up to three as the remaining fractions are lost. The unit then crosses from 1209 to 1110 by normal movement, expending the last of its two remaining movement points. In this next example, the German 41st Infantry Division starts in hex 2304 up here. It is going to march to a rail line and then use rail movement to get to hex 1711. There it will get off the trains and then march to hex 1712. The unit has a movement allowance of five movement points. It'll spend the first movement point moving down here to hex 2305. In that hex, it spends another movement point to board the trains. It then moves by rail to hex 2205, and since it's now moving by rail, each hex it enters only costs a tenth of a movement point more. So the unit continues moving along the rail line down here to hex 2006 and then again down here to hex 1711. The unit has thus moved a total of nine hexes by rail, that is from 2305 down to 1711. Up to this point, the unit expends two movement points to get from 2304 to 2305 and then load onto the trains. It then expends another nine-tenths of a movement point by moving the nine hexes by rail to get to 1711. In getting off the trains in 1711, any unused fractions of a movement point are lost so at the point it gets off of the trains, it expends the last tenth as well. So now it would be in hex 1711, having expended a total of three movement points. It would then move normally from 1711 to 1712, expending one more movement point. The player chooses to stop moving the unit at this point, even though it still has another movement point of its original five remaining. The Germans were incredibly efficient at moving their units by rail. In fact, they could do so under conditions that other armies could not. As you see in the rules, for example, German units can entrain in a hex that is in an enemy zone of control. They can also quickly move off of trains and into combat. As a result, German units can use rail movement and then later in the same movement phase enter an enemy zone of control. Let's look at an example of a German unit doing these kinds of things. In this example, we'll use the German 41st Division, which is located here in Hex 2004. Notice that there are a number of Russian units on the map and each is exerting a zone of control into adjacent hexes. In fact, right now the German 41st Division is in the zone of control of this Russian unit here in 2105, the Russian 30th Infantry Division. The German player has the 41st Division expend one movement point to entrain in hex 2004. 
It then leaves the hex and the Russian zone of control in that hex by moving by rail to 2003 to the north. Because it is moving by rail, it does not have to expend, according to the rules, the extra movement point for exiting or leaving the enemy zone of control in 2004. From this point, it would continue moving by rail down the single track rail line to Konigsberg, and then south and slightly to the east to 1810, and then on to 1711. It takes this particular route because it doesn't want to move into hex 1611, which contains an enemy zone of control. Because if it did so, it would have to stop moving at that point. By the route it's taken, it's moving 13 hexes by rail. This would cost an additional 1 and 3 tenths of movement points, but since it gets off the trains in 1711, this is rounded up to two movement points. So up to this point, it's expended three movement points. One for in training, one and three tenths rounded up to two for moving by rail for a total of three. The division then marches south to hex 1712. In doing so, it expends the last two of its movement points, one for the broken terrain and one for entering the zone of control of the Russian 29th Infantry Division. So it's made this complete move, expending the five movement points that it has available for the turn.